Uh, great. Uh, thanks very much for the vivid introduction and also the colorful dress you have for giving this whole session a lot of uh, vivid feeling. So um, um, this is Yifeng Shen. So I'm going to give this talk. My student, Yu Fei Ting, uh, worked hard on this project, but she couldn't come because of personal reasons. And she actually is joining University of California at Santa Pablo as assistant professor uh, very soon. All right, so uh, let's start with local redundancy. Um, now, local redundancy is a very well-known technique uh, problem in program source code. And the way that people uh, compile it usually is, is to find out uh, some kind of expressions that are local invariant. Like this case is B divided by C is a local invariant to this for loop. So compiler will be able to remove it out of the loop and get some good speed ups. Now, our observation is that, uh, well, there are some large scoped redundant computations in lots of loops that are elusive to existing compiler techniques. So in, here is one example. We have this while loop. Inside there is a for loop. If you look at the, the innermost statement, uh, so here this statement actually have three opera uh, operators on the right-hand side. They actually have, they are invariant, but only to one of these two different loops. And because of that, together, this whole statement expression is not considered as looping invariant for compiler, for modern compiler, which actually is correct. But if you look at it more carefully, um, this inner for loop essentially does some kind of reduction on this array A and array B across this uh, I loop relations. Now, with that, we would be able to rewrite the code uh, to a form shown on the left, on the slide. So in this form, what we did is, well, we put out this uh, uh, summation of the A array and summation of B array, and put them just in front uh, at the beginning of this bar loop. After doing this rewriting, so it's very obvious that there are these two summations actually are invariant to this while loop, and therefore, we could actually move them out of the while loop and get good speed ups. And because this operation reduces the computational complexity of the code from O uh, m times k to O m plus k, so this is why we could get a large security speed, speed ups. Now, such kind of opportunities also exist in some regular affine loops. Now, com traditional compiler is good at building these uh, affine loops, but in this case, for this affine loop, there exist pretty, pretty uh, a large amount of uh, redundant computations or possible vibrations. However, existing compilers still cannot detect them and remove them. And uh, in this same case, for this case, similarly, if we do this kind of rewriting, we could actually reduce the computational complexity and get large speed ups. Now, our observation is that such kind of cases is not a rare. Actually, it exists in many real-world applications, ranging from batch grading decent computation to partial differential equation, so on and so on. Now, this kind of observation actually also echo some kind of um, points pointed out by some previous literatures. Now, the potential is huge. Um, now, because these uh, transformations could reduce the computational complexity, so what we see actually could get a large speed ups. If, and the speed up actually gets more, they have more iterations in the loop. So this graph X size shows number of iterations for the loop, and Y size shows the speed ups in log scale. What you can see here is this um, uh, super linear uh, curve. Okay, so these are uh, six benchmarks in our experiments. Uh, we have more benchmarks shown later. Now the question here is we want to solve is how can we make the compilers be able to detect and remove such large scope redundant computations across loops? Now our solution is GLORY. Uh, GLORY stands for generalized loop redundancy elimination. Now it has three important features. One, it enables large scope redundancy discovery and removal. Second, it offers a unified treatment to various loop redundancies. And third, it uh, can accommodate complex mass functions, irregular loops, and complicated uh, loop carry dependencies. Now, a key observation behind Glory is that, uh, well, 
because of the nature of those kind of uh, large scope hidden redundancies, um, to discover them and to remove them, remove them, we need to have some capability to conduct a large scope analysis and computation reordering. And this reordering has to happen both at the expression level and also at the loop level. Now the key elements in glory include these three and these two components. Uh, the first component is called LER notation. Um, and the second one is uh, a whole set of novel algorithms for analysis and transformations. Now, for a given loop uh, written in some source code, source language, and the first step Glory does is to converge the loop into LER formulae. Now, this formulae, uh, I will show some examples soon, they provide some high level representation of the original computation. And then through the whole set of noble algorithms to the analysis and transformation, the, we would be able to get some optimized LER formulae. And then from this optimized formulae, the optimized loop could be derived. Now this LER notation is our enabler. It, uh, because it provides this symbolic high level representation of the program, it makes it much easier for program uh, for, for, for analyzing and discovering the redundant computations in the large scope. And this set of noble algorithms provides the key uh, elements for doing those kind of transformations and uh, analysis at this LER notation level. Now here is the LER notation. Uh, now it consists of these three major components, uh, L, E, R, the AR is, well, is a combination of loop notations. And uh, these notations can be um, from these four uh, symbols. The first one stands for regular uh, loops, second one for summation, third one for product, and the last one for while loop. And also, uh, these kind of notations system could also be extended to other semi rings um, loops. Now, the E and R uh, respectively for expressions in the computation and the result. Now this LER notation is able to represent both regular and irregular loops, and it can also explicitly uh, encode the dependencies, loop carry dependencies. Now here is a simple example. Now this uh, while loop is the one we showed earlier in this talk, and through this um, code to formula transformation. So the, on the right hand side, what you see is the LER notation produced from this value. Now it represents the innermost statement in this case, uh, the, cal the calculations. And it has these uh, two loop notations, the WT stands for the while loop. The subscript the T is an added symbol for the identity of this while loop. And then the, sum the, the summation, a uh, symbol for the for loop. Inside we have this expression. This expression is our E component in our notation. And on the right hand side is the D sub T, which is the result, with the, the, the R component. And you notice that uh, while this uh, both W and D has subscript the T, this is because this, those variables have a uh, loop carry dependence across iterations of our loop. So this notation explicitly encodes they express the, these carry loop carry dependencies in the variable names. Now with this LER notation, we would be able to do much easier um, large scope analysis of uh, these loop calculations. And we could uh, do all kinds of uh, um, reordering of computation, reordering of loops, and uh, by leverage, and also we can leverage all of those uh, mathematical associativity and other properties much easier. So in the second step for Glory is Glory would apply those algorithms that we will talk a little bit later on um, to this original LER formula and get the optimized LER formula. And after this, uh, then the, there is a one step is formula to code transformation would translate these formulas in, back into loops. Now let's take a quick look about these algorithms. Um, now, first of all, why do we well, why do we need to design a whole set of uh, new algorithms for analysis? 
Now, there is uh, three, there are several major reasons. One is, well, the loop redundancies actually are complex, could have different uh, varieties here. Now, as an example here, I showed these four loops. Uh, they belong to different uh, types of loop uh, dependencies. The first one is loop invariant expression dependence, redundancy. Um, the A times B is invariant. So this is the easiest uh, loop redundancy that traditional compiler can already handle. Then now, the category two shows the case that raw layers with then loop invariant expression, that they are not completely invariant to the loop. They are invariant to partial, uh, partial iterations of the loop space. And then category three of, is for loop invariant loops. So in this case, you see that if this, the loop, the I, L, J loop that used to compute this uh, X, uh, I, L times Y, L, J, actually, a, this whole nested loop actually is invariant across the loop K. And then the category four is partially loop invariant loops. Um, now, because these kind of varieties, we need to have different ways to detect them and uh, address them. And the second complexity is, uh, well, the, the statement in the loop could also use different mathematical operations. Uh, we, we could have some divisions. We could have uh, some co-seeing or seeing or a mod operation uh, function calls. And how to handle these? Uh, and the next one is loop index dependencies. So, so some loop bounds actually could be a function of uh, some loop index variables and how to deal with them. Last one is uh, there could be, for a given loop, we have the formula, but we could still have many ways we could reorder the, the, the computation across expressions and across loops. And uh, there's some very interesting interplays between the reordering between expressions and the loops. Now, uh, and for the last point, I want to mention, emphasize that well, there has been some very early study about uh, uh, computation reordering. And uh, people have proved that well, finding the best order actually is MB complete. Now, um, so this slide shows the uh, entire workflow of glory transformation. So uh, I do not plan to talk about, about into details. What I want to quickly mention is, well, what it really works out is uh, it takes the, the original LER notation formula, and then step by step by applying different transformation algorithms, it try to uh, remove, address all of those complexities I mentioned earlier, and uh, it can be uh, wielded in this way. So, um, and then through this whole process, it manages to discover and remove if all, all the, those four categories of uh, loop carry uh, redundancies. And there are lots of details uh, in our paper. I would strongly encourage you to read our paper uh, because this whole process has been very uh, interesting for us to study and to invent. I, f I think that uh, could be also interesting to you. Um, all right, so for evaluation, um, we use the 21 benchmarks. These benchmarks come from some real world problems and also some open publicly available benchmark suites and also from some previous uh, studies. And uh, for comparison, we use the GCC. Um, um, GCC uh, compiler mostly is only uh, effective for the category one redundancy elimination. And then there are two uh, research uh, papers. The ESR paper, uh, ESR uh, technique was from back to 2008. It actually is a way to find common sub-expressions with array references. And it only applies for category one and category two redundancies. ASE is another work, earlier work. It applies to stencils, only stencil, regular stencil computations that meet certain conditions. Now, this result shows the uh, speed ups we got using Glory on these benchmarks that have categories three and four redundancies. Um, so it's worth noting that now those previous methods actually can work on these benchmarks. They do not give any speed ups. Now, uh, this chart shows that well, the, when because these um, redundancies elimination could change, reduce the computational complexity, the more uh, heavy uh, iterations the loop has, we have, uh, get more speed ups. This ranges to thousands or hundreds of thousand times. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's large. And then uh, similar, we did the same experiments on some other machines, 
and speed up trend is similar. And then this result shows the category two uh, redundancy elimination results, performance result. And uh, for these benchmarks, some of them on the right hand side, um, the benchmarks actually are stencil, regular stencil um, benchmarks from previous study. So the uh, ASC technique can work well for these benchmarks, but ASC cannot work well for other benchmarks that are non-stencil competitions. Now, ESR uh, works the other way. It works on those non-stencil competitions, but even for those um, ESR can work, the performance from glory is much higher uh, some, a lot of times than these uh, ESR measures. The major reason is because glory and at this level, at the symbolic level, it actually, uh, with all of those algorithms, would be able to find a much better uh, reordering results for the loops. All right, so uh, finally, so here is uh, the summary of this talk. Now, in this work, we introduced this LER notation, which is a high level representation for various kinds of loops with uh, all of the complexities that uh, can be handled. And we also you know, proposed a whole set of uh, algorithms for, analysis, for analyzing and these uh, loops at a very high level. And uh, we are able to remove all of the loop redundant, redundancies of all categories. And together, they gave us lots of uh, speed ups on these 21 benchmarks we tested. At a higher level, um, the, the kind of a key insight we attained from this work is that well, compiler technology and techniques have been developed for so many years, has been pretty mature in lots of cases. Um, so this uh, redundancy elimination, as Greg, Greg mentioned earlier, is a very well developed technique in many years. But as, even for this technique, so such a mature technique, this work shows that uh, we still are able to get lot, much larger speed ups. Um, this actually is benefit, uh, benefit from our introduction of this area uh, which is uh, the right abstraction at a higher level. At the same time, with these suitable algorithms, we would be able to really get uh, such kind of mileage. Well, thanks for your attention. <laughs>